I think the biggest problem that confronts any business is change. Now, a lot of people see change as a threat rather than an opportunity. What makes Patagonia different to many other companies is their mission statement. They publicly state that they want to use business to inspire and implement environmental solutions. We give 1% of annual sales to the environment. The outdoor clothing company's latest wetsuits are mostly made of a new plant-based rubber from a company called U.S. The world's first neoprene-free wetsuits. The owner of one company is asking us to help the environment by buying less, including less of everything he sells. A few years ago, we started a venture fund to fund companies that had an environmental mission. We make skateboards from recycled fishing nets. So now, Chouinard is taking another step, asking people to repair their faded, frayed, and fragile clothing. We've been able to demonstrate how, as a business, we can be committed to environmental protection, and as a business, financially, we can be very, very successful. Most people don't like change. And if you're going to have a company that intends to be here for a long time, you have to constantly reinvent the company. Thank you so much uh, for inviting us to be here on behalf of Patagonia Korea and on behalf of my colleagues back in Ventura. And I think it's very interesting to talk about the our industry, the industry we share in the current coronavirus crisis, and also to think about how we're going to emerge from this crisis as businesses and also as communities of people who work together. We have an industry that's tremendously wasteful. People buy 60% more clothes than they did 20 years ago, and they wear them for half as long before they discard them. In the fast fashion industry, which appeals to very young people, the average piece of clothing is worn four to five times before it's thrown away. And it's not given away, it's thrown away. This is because we know, everybody in the industry knows, that everything we do to make a piece of clothing takes back more from the planet than we could repay. It causes more pollution, it uses more resources, then we know how to give back. And so we should be thinking, we've been saying for the past 15 years or so, that as brands, we really should be encouraging a level of responsibility that we have not seen in the fashion industry. We started out encouraging people to bring back clothes that they had used up to give to us and we would recycle them into something of equal value. But we very quickly realized that recycling was the last step, but you needed to really start with the four R's. You needed to start at the beginning with reduce to have people make thoughtful purchases. You needed things to last a long time. You needed to make clothes that were repairable, particularly items like jackets with zippers uh, that can wear out before the jacket itself. And you need to provide platforms for customers so that they can trade clothes or that they can sell clothes that they no longer wear. And the, 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 the gist of this is that we need to change the relationship between the customer and the piece of clothing and change the relationship between the brand and the customer. So for many years, the great emotional moment for the customer has been the moment in which they put their credit card over the counter and take possession of that piece of clothing. It's something that they wanted and now it's something that they have. But what we're trying to develop 
is a very different relationship. And I think a lot of people who have Patagonia clothes are attached to them more and more as the clothes get older. And that's because they've worn the clothes to places they love to go to doing things they love to do. They build associations. And it's this kind of relationship rather than the simple novelty of buying something new that we have an obligation to build with, with the customers. It, built, it brings customers back to us. It builds on relationships rather than individual transactions. It creates more sales at full price uh, than at sale price. And it's healthier for the environment. It's healthier for the customers. There was something rather shocking with COVID. We, um, we like many other brands, canceled many of our orders because we lost an enormous amount of business in April and May. And we didn't know what business would be like coming into the summer and fall. But a number of brands not only canceled future orders, they walked away from clothes that were already made that they had commissioned and refused to pay for them and left them at the, at the suppliers. This is the kind of, that is an unsustainable economic activity. And that is an activity that uh, of irresponsibility on the part of the brands that we should be investigating as an industry and say, this must never happen again. This is putting on poor people uh, the problems, uh, making poor people, poorer people pay for the problems of the richer brands. I wanted to talk a little bit about internally what we've come to understand with COVID. There's an almost universal understanding, especially among our designers, but also among our product people and our marketing people, that as we come out of this crisis for the next few years, we actually want to make our lines smaller. We want to make our products last even longer. We want to make them higher performance. We want to question everything we make and say, does this really justify its existence? This is in addition to two important projects that we identified in the late 2010s. 86% of our environmental impact comes from fabrics, and that's going to be true throughout the industry. And the major fabrics we use are polyester, nylon, and cotton. We are absolutely committed by 2025 to changing our sourcing for polyester and nylon so that it no longer uses oil that comes out of a well. We want that polyester or nylon to come from either natural sources or from 100% recycled plastic that's already on the planet. This is absolutely critical for us as an industry if we're going to address the whole question of climate change. The second big question for us is uh, with the natural fibers, cotton and hemp. And we want to make those, we do make them organically already, but what we want to do is to adopt regenerative organic practices between now and the end of this decade. And that means in addition to not using chemicals, we adopt practices like crop rotation or companion planting that actually enrich the soil, that build topsoil faster than nature can. When you do this, you use far less water, you use far less inputs, even if they're organic inputs, and you also create the potential to draw carbon out of the sky and into the ground, back into the ground where it belongs. A tremendous potential uh, identified by the French government and by Rodale and others. So those are the two big projects we have, but I'd also like to mention sort of one other story that indicates our direction or our North Star for developing products for the next decade or two. We have a small food company called Patagonia Provisions that provides food for backpackers, people going into the mountains. And we formed a lot of relationship with people who are doing interesting things with agriculture. One of them is a man named Wes Jackson who's now 80 years old, and it's been his life project for the past 50 years 
to restore the Great Plains to health. This was once the most fertile farmland in the world and now is very depleted by growing monocultures of soy, corn, and wheat. And then West told us about a, a perennial wheat grass that he had developed as an agronomist about 20 years ago with roots that go six meters deep into the ground. And when you have a plant with roots that go that deep, it breaks up the microbes and fungi that create topsoil much faster than nature can. So he told us this and we said, this sounds wonderful. You call it Kernza, we want to buy some. Where, where can we get it? And you said, oh, you can't buy Kernza. And he said, why not? He says, I can't get anyone to plant it. He said, why not? He says, that they tell me that in order to plant it, they've got to have some place to sell it and there's no market. So what we did is we partnered with a brewery in Portland and with Whole Foods a chain of natural stores in the United States to make a beer using Kernza. And we got the first 200 acres, the first 100 hectares of Kernza planted. But that's not the end of the story. We now have a major cereal company interested, they've now committed to 34,000 acres, about 15,000 hectares of uh, growing Kernza because of the potential to create topsoil so fast and to sequester carbon. So with this one product, we are, the North Star for us is we're actually giving back to the planet more than we're taking. And two, we're solving a major problem in agriculture and food distribution. And now with that food company, every product we make has to solve some major problem in agriculture. And that also teaches us the potential that we have in the clothing business to eventually try to do the same thing. This is the kind of work that motivates everybody in the company. When you know that you're doing something new that will help us deal with climate change, that will help us deal with the loss of biodiversity, that will help us create a better world for our children and grandchildren. Whether you're a packer, a demand planner, an accountant, a designer, a warehouse worker, it's tremendously motivating and it creates the most satisfying work you can have. And it's the kind of work I would wish for everyone in our industry. Thank you. 네, 팬데믹 이후 책임 있는 회사는 무엇이며 앞으로 10년 동안 우리와 함께할 사회적 불평등과 환경 문제로 발생할 수 있는 여러 위기에 대해서 함께 고민해 볼수 있도록 사업을 어떻게 설정해야 되는지에 대해서 알아볼 수 있는 시간이었습니다. 네, 지구가 목적, 사업은 수단이라는 사명 아래 환경 위기에 대한 공감대를 형성하고 해결 방안을 실행하기 위해서 사업을 수단으로 운영하고 있다는 파타고니의 철학에 대해서 알아볼 수 있는 시간이었습니다. 자, 이 시대 패션 기업이 갖춰야 할 모범적인 철학이 아닐까 생각이 드는데요. 2007년 이미 포춘지가 선정한 세계에서 가장 쿨한 기업에 선정된 파타고니아. 지구의 미래를 생각하는 미션을 실천하는 기업, 또한 진정성의 발현, 브랜드 철학을 많은 기업들이 참고해 주시기를 기대합니다.